It's basically some people are saying like masturbatory pedophile uh, material because it's 10 year old girls twerking and getting sprayed with water and did they, wearing, did, are they documenting it or did they? No, it's it's a fictional. Movie. It's fictional. It's fictional. Yeah. Ooh, and so that's the, troubling. And so it's on, on camera. It's these girls are dressed very scantily and it's like. I think an allegory might have been more appropriate here. Or well, why not just document the actual problem? So this is the thing is to to highlight the inappropriate nature of a 10 year old twerking on TikTok. They hired a bunch of 10 year olds and then surrounded them with cameras and demanded that they twerk while they filmed it, which I, which is just a strange way to get that message across. But that but actually, I'm not here to poo poo that. What I thought was interesting is when you went to Rotten Tomatoes, at least when I last checked, it had, I think, an 85 percent critic rating and a 3% general population rating, mm -hmm. which is to say either there's a massive disconnect between what critics like and what the population likes, or there's a message, a political message that the critics are trying to get across. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of Dave Chappelle. Yeah, I was going to say, just completely Dave Chappelle reversed. had a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was and like then sub 10. And then eventually it got up to 35% from yeah. the critics and a 99% from the populace. Mm -hmm. And it both of these kind of reminded me of the the Hollywood or the Netflix or Rotten Tomatoes type people trying to tell you what you like and what you don't like and what's appropriate and what's not. And the population just being like, no, mm -hmm. we think Dave Chappelle's hilarious and we don't want to watch 10 year olds twerk. Mm -hmm. and I just think I just think it's interesting as you, you see, I guess, morals or messages try to come from on high and just get completely rejected in some cases. Well, my actual question that I that I have not dug deeply into is how effective and and if not how effective in what cases is that media blitz of this is good or this is bad effective at changing the reaction of a population so it seems like with cuties it's not been mm -hmm. very effective in fact it had almost backlash to now the point someone like me who hasn't seen it has been hit with the first message of it's really really bad so even if i were to look at it i'd be coming in expecting that yeah I wonder if it's if it's closer if the critics can move something though. That's that seems to be my like if if something has a 98 critic score on Rotten Tomatoes and an 80 from the audience, I wonder how much critics didn't boost that. And I've seen sure. this in myself. I sit down to watch a movie and I'm expecting something amazing. Like what was the one that everybody liked Parasite. on Netflix? It was the gangster movie on Netflix. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. The Irishman. Personally, I was waiting for that to get good the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I was just expecting and waiting and I watched the whole thing and then I walked out of it and tried to make sense of how it was good. And later on, I was like, I hated it, yeah. <laughs> it is what I concluded. But had I been more ambivalent about it, I think I would have just turned it off. Well, I a, would have just turned it off if I hadn't read the critics. But if I'd been closer to really loving it, I would have pushed myself in that direction sure. so as to align with the critics. So I think when there's less of a gulf, the critics can nudge people towards them. But when it's just stratospheric, it almost goes reverse. Yeah. Well, they're going to try, right? The Oscars mm -hmm. just came out. They said you can't win Best Picture unless you have certain mm -hmm. diversity requirements met. So they're, yeah. they're definitely going to try to influence culture in that way. Mm -hmm. Well, they, these are not the critics. This is the Academy. That's what I'm point. saying, though. Yeah. It's, I, in my mind, it's kind of like Hollywood is mm -hmm. trying. You know, I mean, the critics are basically part of Hollywood when they tell you that Cuties is an amazing movie and an incredibly thoughtful, award winning film. Yeah. And then everyone who watches it hates it. To me, that seems to be coming from on high from Hollywood of like, no, you want this message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I want to read that article again. I was actually going to talk about it next time because I wanted to make sure that I had the exact. The requirements. The requirements. So let's, sure. let's talk about it next time because I my first reaction was I was like, you're putting literal quotas on. I think that's the way the world is going to go. Yeah. In my mind, as much as everybody right now is poo pooing. Uh, California and California politics. Historically, it seems I'm from the East Coast. I have no dog in this fight. It's not like I'm a Californian that music and style and all this stuff tends to come from California first and then make mm -hmm. its way to the East Coast and then the middle. And it tends to be that way, too, with, I guess, more progressive social things. So mm -hmm. like gay marriage, first place I think it was being pushed for was probably San Francisco. Well, certainly the hippies arose and, you know, and so you get and so you get this kind of first it happens in California, then it hops to the East Coast, then it moves to the middle, mm -hmm. which makes me think if it is the case that Oscar Oscar winning movies have to have quotas where you're like literally 13 percent African-American. I think it's six percent Asian. How much of the population is Asian? Well, I would, they, they have they might have different quotas that do not match. The sure. No, representation I'm saying if, in the if this is the case, you I don't I don't. Let's read the article in, in more depth to, to understand. Sure. It. I'm just saying if that's the case, 
I think it'll spread from Hollywood to other companies in California. And then mm -hmm. I think it'll spread to the rest of the US. I mean, it's kind of the same way that uh, trans was like totally unaccepted. And now it's very accepted. And actually mm -hmm. the thing that's unaccepted in most cases is saying something negative publicly about anything about trans. And so I think, <clears throat> like it or not, if Hollywood does put Oscar winning movies, they say there's going to be quotas. I think that's the first domino towards yeah. eventually like a much more unspoken, no duh, of course our company has to have a certain amount of people measured mm -hmm. by the government or whatever it might be. For a certain amount of each race or each sexual orientation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if that's if that's what the Oscar thing is saying, then I think that's kind of the canary letting you know like that's that's where things are going to so go. So goes the nation. Yeah, yeah. As, as goes California. Now the question is, I think the way that California has that influence is obviously through media. Uh, but I don't think they change the minds of the the same generation. Like the movie producer in California is not changing the mind of the coal miner in West Virginia. No, it's his kids. It's his kids. Yeah. And so and so I think still these kids uh, have it. But I wonder if there's going to be a firewall that is built because it seems like now the and perhaps I just wasn't alive in the 60s were probably a huge, a huge gulf. But there have been historical pushbacks like there were against the hippies where drugs went too far and then we locked all of these potentially very useful compounds <laughs> in a cage for sure. like 50 60 years yeah yeah i'm just thinking more i saw a study i forget the numbers but basically it was like no one under 18 mm -hmm. is against gay marriage mm -hmm. no, even no matter where they live no matter how red state they are it's just yeah, like yeah. yeah we don't care get married yeah yeah uh that is definitely not the opinion that was held from 50 year olds 10 years ago. Yeah, I don't know. Parents probably don't. Have I don't the know same if opinion. that's how they feel. I don't yeah. know if that's how 60 year olds feel today. But go back 10 or 20 years to a 40 year old. It's not universally considered acceptable for gay people to get married. Mm -hmm. But every 15 year old, apparently or not every but a huge percentage just cool with it. Yeah. And so I think that's the same way that trans is going in terms of if you're young, you just think it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Everyone that I've seen, not everyone, I keep saying that, but largely most people who are upset about it are older. And if hiring changes such that it, you have like explicit affirmative action rules a two-year-old is just going to think that's the way of the world and they're going to think it was weird that it wasn't always that way yeah you know what i mean i was what this it, when i was watching the social dilemma the distinct impression that i got is that it, it happens every every single generation is it almost doesn't matter what you're born into the ability of a person to adapt to their culture is nearly infinite like if you live in a warrior culture and they just murder people, it's like mm -hmm. you'll just grow up and that'll be normal and that'll be normal for your whole life. If you grow up in a society that doesn't have cell phones, though, and then you get to work at Google, you're going to be like, wait, are we doing too much? Yeah. But if you grow up in a society where there's a panopticon and everything you do is being measured, none of those kids will complain <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about yeah. it. So it's what was interesting, again, about this social dilemma thing. It's it's all these people from another generation being like, we've gone too far. That's what I'm saying. We no, need to get back. That's exactly my and point. And these kids are not going to care. No 12-year-old <laughs> no <laughs> watches that and is convinced of it. Yeah, yeah they're, they're like, of course they've been tracking me my whole life. How else would I get the good ads? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Did you see the, the, the meme that's going around about Elon Musk and Bill Gates? No. So everyone's like, I'm not going to take a vaccine from Bill Gates. Yeah. He's going to secretly put a microchip in my body. Meanwhile, Elon Musk's like, so Neuralink is a microchip <laughs> we're going to put in your body. And everyone's like, yeah, Neuralink, yeah, yeah. microchip me. Yeah. It's funny. The PR on those guys, Bill Bill Gates could really use a better PR team. Mm -hmm. or, or I guess it doesn't matter to him and maybe he's not upset, but I did the video on him. And if one presumes that he isn't, in fact, trying to commit mass genocide and is using billions of dollars to do what he thinks is best for the world and is saving millions of lives through the eradication of various diseases, then he has gotten the biggest gulf between the perception of him yeah, and yeah. his actual contribution. Uh, and Elon, I think, has a better brand in terms of just because there's people that don't like Elon and he's and he's made definitely steps. got a better brand than Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't have, I don't think people include him in the uh, psychotic trying to kill everyone group, which is weird because he's got almost the more, I'm going to put a microchip in yeah, your yeah, head yeah. and I'm very overt about it idea. And yeah. Bill Gates is like, no, I'm just trying to make sure that you don't get polio and or, you know, these other things that have killed tons of people in prior generations. Sure. So poor guy. <laughs> you want to talk a little bit about new media, old media? Do you see the Joe Rogan thing? I think you saw it. 
Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description. We'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.